Hi, for this video, what we are going to do is we are going to learn how to find the probability for normally distributed data using hand calculations. Um, this will show you how to convert a random variable X to a Z score and then use a table in order to find the probability or the area under the curve. If you want to do this a much quicker way, you can always check out my videos on how to find this using both the TI-84 or the TI-INSPIRE graphing calculators because I do the same problem using those two graphing calculators as a shortcut. Using the graphing calculators, you don't have to first convert to a z-score, but if you are using the table, you must always convert it to a z-score first. So let's get started with this problem. The monthly utility bill in a city is the monthly utility bills in a city are normally distributed with a mean of $110 and a standard deviation of 13. We are going to find the probability that a randomly selected utility bill in the city is less than $85, between $90 and $120, and more than $130. So in order to do this, what you must first do is whatever probability you are finding, you must first convert that random variable x into a z-score. And remember to do this, you would do z, and then you would take your value minus your mean divided by the standard deviation. So I'm writing it out in word form because sometimes the um, formulas or the in statistics look scary because of all of the Greek letters. Um, but let me put it in here with the formula that you would use. So we would use x is the random variable, that's our value, minus our mean, which is mu, divided by our standard deviation. Mu and, or the mean and the standard deviation are the two parameters that you must know in order to um, find the probability or to find a z-score. So we would have to pull that from our problem. So our mean is 110. So that tells us that the mean is 110, and the standard deviation is 13. So we would use sigma equals 13. Those are the two important things that we have to pull from every problem in order to calculate probabilities in a normal distribution. So the first one that we are finding is we are looking for the probability that it's less than $85. So in symbol notation, this is saying that we have the probability that the random variable x is less than 85. We can't find this without technology or without a table value. Um, and in order to find a table value, what we have to do is we have to convert it to a z-score. If you remember, a z-score is just telling you in a standard normal model um, how many standard deviations above or below the mean you have. So if we draw a rough sketch of the standard normal model, remember that it's always centered at zero, and then our standard deviations go out one, two, three to the right, negative one, negative two, negative three to the left. So the first thing that we would have to do to find the probability that x is less than 85 is convert it to a z-score so we can see approximately where it's going to go, and then we can use a table. So for this one, our x value is just simply the value that we are looking for, the 85, minus the mean, which is 110, divided by the standard deviation. For this one, since we have a negative, or since we have a value that is below the mean, that tells us we're going to have a negative z-score. So if I were to plug this into my calculator, I get negative 1.9235. When we use a table to look for this, we would just look for the first, we always round to two decimal places. So we would look on our table for negative 1.92. And in this case, when we're looking for this, um, we always round to two decimal places, which is why I personally like technology better because it gives you a more accurate answer. So the negative 1.92 would be down here 
And so this is the area that we are looking for. We can see from the shading that it's not going to be very much because it's almost two standard deviations below. So with this, we can say that the probability that x is less than 85 is equal to the probability that our z-score is less than negative 1.92. So now what we need to do is we need to pull up our standard normal table. And I grabbed the wrong one. I apologize. Sorry. I want this one. Um, so with this, you have a z-score. This is positive z-score. So if it's more than 50%, um, this one tells us that it's shaded to the left. There are other ones that shade to the right. So just make sure that you look at the key of your standard normal table. So like I said, for this one, we shade to the left. We are looking for negative 1.92. So what we would do is we would look here for the negative 1.9, and then we would go across until we reach the third decimal place, which is the 2. And we can see from the table that negative 1.92 has an area, a cumulative area of 0 0.0274. So that would be our probability. So 0 0.0274. Um, is our value. If we use technology, we would find something that's slightly different than this, and that's because technology keeps all of these floating points and it calculates a more accurate um, probability. But this is really close. The technology gave us 0 0.0272, so it wasn't much of a difference. And usually when you just have one value, it's not that much of a difference. So if we were to interpret this decision, because it's always important to interpret it, we could say the probability of randomly selecting a bill from this city is from this city that is, sorry, I forgot to put that as less than 85 because it's important to understand what we're selecting. So the probability of randomly selecting a bill from this city that is less than 85 dollars is approximately 2.74 percent. So if I change it to a percent because people understand that better, um, in this case, this is something that is not very likely to occur. It is not likely to have something that is less than $85. It only happens 2.7% of the time. Typically, we say that about 5% is where we consider it to be unusual. Um, it just kind of depends on the situation. Uh, for some things, we can have things a little bit higher. For other things, we want them lower and more precise. So it just kind of depends on the situation. So for the next one, we want to find the values. Um, we want to find the probability that it's between two values. And with between two values, this does require much more work if you're doing hand calculations. So for this one, we are looking for between 90 and 120. So we're looking for the probability that x is greater than 90 but less than 120. And like I said before, what we must first do with this is we have to convert it to z-scores. And so this case, what we would need to do is if we draw out our normal curve. Okay. With our 0, 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations. And then on the other side, the negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 we would first need to calculate the z-score for both of these. So I would have to find the z of 90 by doing 90 minus 110 divided by 13. And then 90 minus 110, <coughs> excuse me, um, would be, again, below. So we would get negative 1.54 approximately. I rounded to two decimal places. It was, it re it was really negative 1.53846 but I rounded it to negative 1.54. And then we would also have to find the z of 120. In this case, 120 
is above the mean, so that means that we're going to have a positive z-score. So for this one, we get 0 0.77 approximately. It was really 0 0.7692. So in this case, we've rounded twice already. So when we find the area of these two, um, because we've approximated so much, this one is going to be off. Um, it's going to be more off from the calculator values than the other one because we're rounding more times. So with this one, what we would have is negative 1.54, and so more than half, or a little bit more than halfway between negative one and two, and then 0.77, which is almost to one. Okay. And so then we're finding this area in between. We can see that from the shading that this is a much greater area than what we found on the last one. So remember that the probability that x is between 90 and 120 for this distribution is equal to the probability that our z-score is greater than negative 1.54 but less than 0 0.77. So what we have to do with this is we have to find our larger area minus our smaller area. So we would find the table value for 0 0.77 and then we would subtract from it because the 0 0.77 gives us this and everything down to negative infinity. But we want to stop at the one, negative 1.54 so we would stop at this value right here and we would subtract out this area below that. Okay, so we would find the table value for 0 0.77, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, because it's positive, I have to go to the positive side for my z table. And I would look for 0 0.7 and then I would go across until I reach the 7 at the top, which is the 0 0.7794. So let's write that down. So we have 0.7794 from the table, and then we have to subtract out the table value from the negative um, 1.54. So we would then go look for this value in our table. So the negative 1.54, I would come up here to the negative 1.5, and then I would go over until I line up with the 4 at the top, which gives me point. 0618, so 0.0618. And then we would subtract these two, and that would give us our pro approximate area between the two values. So we end up with 0.7176 approximately. And when I ran this in technology, I got 0.7172. So it's not off by a whole lot, but it is going to be different if you run it in technology. And again, the technology would be a more accurate answer. For the last one, we are looking for the probability that it's more than 130 dollars. Okay, so. In symbol notation, we're looking for the probability that x is greater than 130. So what we would want to do with this is, again, let's have a picture to kind of help us represent to see what our area is looking for. And again, we have to convert it to the standard normal table. So we would have 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then down here, we would have the negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. The z-score is simply just on a number line. Um, where this value falls. So we would calculate our z-score, so remember that z is equal to our x value, so in this case 130, minus our mean, which is still 110, divided by our standard deviation, which is 13. And this one rounds out to be positive 1.54. Okay. Um, so 1.54 would be here, and since we're looking for more than, we would be looking for this area up here. And if we look at our table, it shows us the value to the left. So what we have to do to calculate this one, we would say that the probability that x is greater than 130 is equal to the probability that z is greater than 1.54, which is equal to 1 minus the probability that z is less than 
the 1.54. So what we have to do is we have to look for the table value for 1.54, and we have to subtract it from one because 100% of our area is in here. Um, the other option is this tail here is equivalent to the negative 1.54, so we could look up the table value for negative 1.54, um, which we did up there is 0 0.0618. Um, and I will show you that they end up being the same thing. So we would do 1 minus this value. So again, I'm going to pull up my normal table, and I'm looking for positive 1.54. Okay, so if I look, the 1.5 is here, and then I go across to the 4, I get 0.9382. So 0 0.9382. And if we look at our shading, we can see clearly that we did not shade 93% of our area. Okay, so the probability that x is greater than 130 is going to be approximately 0 0.0618. And if you notice, up here we had negative 1.54. This area ended up being the same. And the area to the right of a positive z-score is always going to be equal to the area to the left of a, the opposite z-score, the negative value. Like I said, for this, there is a lot more work involved if you are doing hand calculations. Um, I do have videos that show you how to do the shortcut in both the 84 and the, um, the TI Inspire. So please make sure that you check those out. As always, thanks for watching.